A billion years ago, a massive volcano violently erupted in the Lesotho Mountains, bringing to the surface a rare type of magma, rich in gemstones. Over the course of time, diamonds were scattered into the river valley below. This river has never been prospected, until now. A group of top international businessmen, led by entrepreneur and adventurer Peter Jago, have secured this sought-after concession. They must journey to the roof of Africa and set up the world's highest alluvial diamond mining operation with the hope of unearthing the biggest diamonds ever found. Will they succeed in this ultimate high-risk, high-reward adventure, or will they be defeated by the harsh terrain and near-impossible challenges of mining in the mountains? I do believe one thing very, very strongly. If you dream it, do it. I am a risk taker. There's certain traits I fail in. That's why I've got partners. Once the lure of the diamond is in your blood, it's always there. None of us have ever done any mining whatsoever. I'm not the little angel here. I am a little hard ass. My aim is to find diamonds, find diamonds and retire. If you can feel pain, you're still human, you're still alive. I think it's going to be insane, literally, to dig for diamonds. It's been a huge and hazardous task to establish the world's highest alluvial mine. The team of diamond hunters have faced many challenges, but it hasn't been without reward. They have found a massive 21 karat diamond, but the rainy season has come early this year and they have been forced to pull out of the mountains. After a three month break, the team are leaving once again from Durban to begin the trip back to the mountain kingdom of Lesotho. Today's the 14th, we're all back at work again. And it's quite lacquer, so hopefully everything will work out well this time. We pretty much know where we've gone wrong and what we need to do. It's back to Lesotho and hopefully you find the big one, right? Eh? Coming back this time, having learned a lot from last year, we've brought in a hopper, which is a big, great big bin that you pour stuff in and it shoots out the one end and into the classifier. Peter is hoping the new machine will turn over twice as much ground, doubling their chances of finding diamonds. After all the technical problems last year, they have a new team member. My name is Alan Kunzler. Come up here to join these guys, help them look for diamonds. Background, worked on pumps for the last 25 years. That's actually my game, that's why I've been brought here, to look after the pumps, hydraulics, and all the machinery. We also brought the CAT 966. We also rebuilt the two divers' pumps. We brought in most of the team from last year, not the senior team, but all the rest of the guys were here. Kim still has cancer, but has decided to stop chemotherapy. It's a bit of a shock, you know, that the cancer was back again. The medical world says, you know, do the chemo, do the operation, but it does kill you as well. Otherwise, my only other concern is finding more diamonds. Transporting the heavy hopper is proving to be a nerve-wracking affair. Rob was towing an enormous trailer with the hopper on it, and we estimated its original weight at one and a half tons, I think it was more like three and a half tons, on a one and a half ton trailer. So following it the whole way, I was just hoping not to see the axle break. Because if that had happened, I mean, what would you do with four tons of steel on a dirt road and halfway in the middle of Africa with 200 kilometers of nothing around you? The convoy arrives at the top of the pass at the same time as a massive thunderstorm. What's that? We'd be lucky to get down the pass from this car in low range because it just turns into it's like an ice skating rink. You can't, uh, you have to crawl along, otherwise, you just slide. Fortunately, the storm passes as quickly as it began, but it still takes the rest of the afternoon to get down into the valley on the slippery dirt roads. Just getting here now, it's like. Whew. Thank God, we're here. <laughs> Jesus, thank God. This whole contraption here weighs more than the car. So coming up those passes, I had to go into four-wheel drive. But it's good to be here at last. Temperature's dropped, eh? Shit, it's cold. 
Here comes the cold clothes back out. It was just long and painful, eh? The journey was wonderful, but that border crossing was... If anybody thinks they want to come diamond mining, let me tell you, it's unbelievably difficult. We've learned from last year, and we've learned from a bunch of screw-ups. Now we've got to just apply our minds and try not to screw up. I mean, the machine should be good now. Just hopefully the hopper works properly. If it doesn't, we'll have to figure it out. But discipline's the secret, eh? We've got to really, guys, five days a week, eight to 4.30, must, it must operate. The weekends must be for guys to have a break. But we have to move ground. I see shitloads of dope growing, so beware. We don't want you smoking dope before on the graft. I don't care what you do on the weekends. All you need to do is find 150 carat up there, pink 50 carat, and shit, everybody makes money. You get one stone, if we just get a 12 carat blue, they sold that for seven and a half million dollars. Seven and a half million dollars today is 80 million rand. That can keep us going for five years. Yeah, I've got to basically eat a lot of leafy greens, all things high and so restaurants. So restaurants need my thing for, for cancer. No more meats, no dairy products, no definitely no sugars. It takes a lot of getting used to. All the gear has to be taken out of storage and transported back to the mining site. I'm a bit concerned about the bouncing on our trucks. It looks pretty treacherous. <laughs> Let's have a go. I'm gonna have to just flat foot it when I get halfway across. Beautiful, but it's hostile, eh? Woo. You don't realize it till you've been here a couple of days. I mean, you can see all the sort happening here. This is where we were sorting. Uh, we had our two classifiers standing there. Jesus, it's looking shit, eh? Look at the rust on there. Go, listen to the water. Okay, let's go, Kim. Shit, full of rust. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Does it got hot? It's been three months since these machines last worked, and now the TLB, vital to the operation, will not start. Yeah. Didn't we empty most of the diesel? No, 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 it, was, it should be full. Think so? Yeah, we didn't use it that day. We pulled quite a bit and then... It's getting hard yet, Rob. <laughs> Let Warren do it now. They managed to get the TLB running. It was just standing idle for too long. Straight, straight. Okay, start lifting. The redesigned diver's pumps are offloaded. The machinery is set up again next to the river. Gary is just concerning me a bit. So I don't know if his focus is here at work or not. Um, he's been on the phone, he's very jittery. He seems like he's lost a lot of weight. One thing I noticed when we picked up Gary diver in Bethlehem, he seemed very bouncy and just seemed like he was on drugs. There he is running through the fields. Yeah, we are all working. And there's our marijuana ex, uh, expert. Up in the mountains there. Di directing his plantation. Directing his plantation. Our biggest concern is probably Gary right now. Today he wasn't here, that's for sure. 
I mean, he was running around the bushes looking at marijuana trees, and I'm here for one reason, and that's to make money, and I've, I can't have anyone else that's actually going to hinder that. Alan has some concerns about security at the classifier. Now, yes, now the problem is this is where they can scale, because what they're doing, they've got a bag over here, and all the, this is called the concentrate, comes out of this. And when it comes out, they lift that, and it falls into the bag. Now, if they see something go by, they just take it. Are you going up the valley with us? Okay, so lock up, let's go. Here's the spot, eh? This was, this was mud and grass. Peter leads the team up the valley to survey the new mining site, but Gary decides not to join them. Yeah. Yeah. up till three in the morning. Why? Making glass pipe. Making glass pipe. Jesus. He's taking something for G, Peter. From the outset, Gary has, was a completely different person to what he was last year. When we picked up in Bethlehem, he definitely was totally out of kilter. He was uh, on something, on some serious drugs. We got to bring the big machine up here. That was a donkey. But this is the spot, I'm sure. And you see, you got bedrock pretty close, eh? It's right there. Check it. Yeah. The attraction of the diamonds and the fact that this particular zone has the big ones, that's the reason we're here. We're putting our our 10 bucks into the lottery, we're going to get out 100 million. And that's basically why we're here. But we also know that we won't put more than our 10 bucks into this lottery. It's limited, and it must win or go. Rob and Alan are still amazed they managed to get the hopper down into the valley. Did you see, that? Did you see if you look at the back, did you see that the wheels are bent? Well, that thing's staying in the valley. It ain't coming home. It's a hopper that's supposed to weigh one and a half tons, but weighs about three. And a half. Yeah. So the combined weight there is over seven tons. We've brought new pumps. You can see we've got new machines. We've got a new very big front end loader coming down today and this stuff's heavy so be careful with your hands um, just watch out last year we played games this year we're going to find out it'll never go through the water with all this weight this trailer is a one and a half ton trailer we've got about three and a half tons on it i'm surprised the axles didn't snap on the way here the weight of the hopper has everyone concerned they will have to take it to the site in stages They crossed the first river using the weir that was built last year. But the next river is much deeper, and there is no bridge. Even with four-wheel drive engaged, Rob cannot get up the bank. The hopper bin is just too heavy. The only way to get the vehicle and the hopper out of the river is to winch them both out at the same time. Good, old, good thing we got the winch, but otherwise we'd be pretty, pretty, pretty porked. I'm just proud of this trailer that hasn't fucked out. Yeah, flexing. Like the whole frame actually twist. <laughs> we want to take this machine behind the village. Can we go to the tent of it? Yeah. Where do we go? No, you have to go through there. We're yeah. just, yeah, plan of action. We're trying to just get that big jacuzzi up here now. And we're going to try to get it through the village as high up as we can. Yeah. Comes through over the khaki boss. It's fun. Just comes straight over the khaki boss. Oh, geez, Gary's made an appearance. Still sitting in the car, though. <laughs> Fuck. Remember what I said? I have a low tolerance for fucking slap khat and lazy fucks. A big stone here. Where? Yeah. Right, swing, 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 sharp. It's happening. 
Counterbalance. Yeah. It's passed. We're in. I'm surprised we got this right up here. One of the workers has found a novel use for the cannabis growing everywhere. Uh, he's got a he's got a chest saw. It, it's it's uh, it takes it away. What? Yeah, it, it takes away his uh, chest pain. Has it got a nice smell? And then it takes the the shit out of your nose and the lungs. We in Africa, eh? you could shove dope up your ass if you wished. <laughs> All right, lift again. Lift. Someone lift it over there. Lift there. Just lift it. Okay, there's it. Done. Okay, down. That's it. Okay, get out of the way. Go. Go a little bit more. Done. She's out. <laughs> the hopper is off, but Rob has a problem of his own. Too beautiful, Rob. I love these rocks. How the hell did you get over there? How did you get over that thing? It's so like a Land Cruiser. What do you mean, how did I get over it? <laughs> over it. Oh, I don't know. It didn't just appear from under the ground. Standing out in the rain for three months, the trailers have rusted. They have to be careful while hitching them up. Hello. Oh. Hello. It broke my fucking arm, bro. Yeah. yeah, we're doing well, eh? We're getting the stuff up here. Um, a few dangerous moments, but you know what? You've got to just take a few chances, eh? You have to bring one classifier up, so let's do that. Then you can set up the classifier and the, the jig down there and one pump. The remaining parts of the hopper are brought across the river piece by piece to be assembled on the other side. Well, the first time around we took off all this here, which made that a bit, a bit lighter, but uh, we still got stuck the first, on the second river crossing the first time around, but this time we went a little bit more momentum. This is probably a ton of stuff we've taken off here now. So yeah, it's actually gone a lot better than we thought. We didn't think we'd get as far as this point with the trailer and a, and a vehicle. We're gonna move some ground here, boys. We're gonna move some ground. We're gonna find this big blue ones. These two machines are basically going back where they were last year. No, someone's bolted this one up halfway down there. Shouldn't it help you guys with the spanner or something there, dude? While the rest of the team continue to set up, Peter and Rob fetch the new cat, but they have concerns about Gary. Your mate's in denial, bro. No, yeah. Yeah. Totally. no, he said, no, something he ate on the bus. Yeah. Oh, he shit. Fuck off, man. Just feeling a bit sick today. Don't know why. Time is loose and feeling nauseous all the time. Until the pumps get here, I'm pretty much sick where I am. Bro. Gary's taking it easy. But the rest of the team are disappointed, unhappy that he isn't getting involved. The new cat is delivered to the bottom of the valley. This is part of Peter's strategy to move more earth and increase the chances of finding diamonds. Nice machine, eh? Listen, we just had an interesting conversation. He wants the job. Chuck out Gary, use Gary's salary, and we can get three outs. Because I mean, Gary's on 25 a month. Because otherwise, it'll only be... No, he turns he wants to work for us. He says straight away, and he knows his machine backwards. The new driver is hired on the spot and put straight to work. Make some mockery of that TLB. Jeez, this is the best investment we've made. Of all the money we've spent, this is the best money. It's phenomenal. It's moving in, in, in two scoops what that TLB does in half an hour. Everyone is impressed by the power of the cat. The heavy pumps are moved with ease to their locations by the river. But then the unthinkable happens. The cat breaks down. Oil is leaking everywhere. 
there's like a flange where like a flexi hose and a hard hose join up and uh, obviously with that join up where they joined it up there's an o-ring in there and uh, that's obviously that o-ring's moved or something but it's just spraying out there so just undo it and just see what's the story there cool let's see if we can fix that Warren gets busy repairing the cat. Kim and Alan are also having problems with the pumps. Alan was hoping to prove himself, but things aren't going his way. What up? And now, what up? Small problems, small problems, small problems. A lot of hurrying and things getting forgotten and another 10, 15 minutes planning and listing the equipment we need on site and making sure we bring everything it would make a hell of a difference. Kim, are you ready? Alan is struggling to solve the pump problems that frustrated the team last season. Meanwhile, Warren thinks he knows what is wrong with the cat. This is initially the problem. So what this does is it holds this thing behind you like that this groove it sits in like a little groove and obviously the oak you put it in the o-ring moved and then they've squashed it so just a new o-ring thank god it's not a big problem but the problem is finding this in the mountains alan is still not having any luck that you guys battled like this last year and we're still on it we're still back two weeks yeah 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 This pump doesn't work, man. No, it, it works. It doesn't work. Well, thank you very much. That's what I've been trying to tell everyone. Put proper pumps. This thing pump, doesn't work. Put proper pumps on. I don't understand why it won't work. There's water there. There's water in the pump. There's water everywhere. Why won't it pump? Put your plastic and show me how your plastic works. We've got to get the compressor and the Jenny here. What for? To pump the thing. How does it need air in order to I'll suck? show you. Put an air hose on, yeah? Yeah. It sucks through this venturi system that creates a vacuum. When the water runs up the pipe, then we close the valves. So there's no shortcut? Head it into gear. I would have thought that if you fill the pump with water, it would pump. It would I'll go and sit under the tree, you guys go and fetch the compressor and the water and whatever you need. I've done my bit, I've tried and it's failed. I better keep quiet because just now they get it working and I'll be in real trouble. We will, but it, it works with fucking great difficulty. But it shouldn't, it's simple and it's a centrifugal pump. You fill it up with water, it pumps. Kim heads back to the lodge to fetch a compressor. All of them is yeah. A small piece of plastic is ruining the other team's day. Um, yeah, this, we're pretty screwed now. Once again in the mountains, that's it. Something as small as an uh, O-ring can now, that's it, fucked for the day. Um, it's going to at least two, three hundred k's worth of traveling. And then we can, okay, just for this, yeah. Rob drives up the pass to look for O-rings, while Kim loads up the compressor. Surprisingly, Rob is first to return. Yeah. We're in up there, the Chinese supervisor has gone for lunch to Afriski. So we just That's slipped sorted. a couple of buffaloes out and said, like, listen, we want a couple of these. We gave him 100 bucks for one, and we didn't give him some more, and he came back with about done, Fuck, 20 for another 100 bucks. 60 yeah, bucks. About, no, okay. it doesn't matter. We're either that, either that and then drive to Blum or for Riesberg. Fuck, you mad. Hopefully the spare O-rings Rob has purchased will get the cat going again. Warren attaches it and the cat is back in action. The compressor is carried down to the river and Warren now tries his luck at sorting out the pump problem. I feel very good that it's that it started. It's just that I didn't understand it. I thought it was just a normal centrifugal pump. But I can understand now what's happened is that they've removed all the air. So there's no cavitation. Any pump doesn't like cavitation. They've taken all the, all the cavitation out of the pump by sucking all the air out of it. And that's what's got it running. There you can see it's running. There's nothing wrong, wrong with the pump. I blamed the pump initially, but obviously it's not primed correct. 
With the pumps working at last, it's time to suit up and get in the water. Gary, oh no, he lifts the whole fucking nose around there. But they aren't moving any ground. The pipes keep getting clogged. Let's go and see. The pump is working now. We've told Gary, Gary, slow it down. Open that flap a bit. But it's still coming out too quick. It's not working. The pump is too fast for this machine. That's the good. That's the good. Gary, this cold. Stop it. Turn the fucking thing up. Turn up enough, it doesn't suck the big stones up. But it's not pulling up the big stones. I can feel it with my hands, Rob. The operation comes to a standstill. We bring up too much dirt, and this machine can't handle it. Come, come and look at the bags quickly. This is supposed to be that size stone. That's going to go back in the river then. Soon we'd be turning up the speed on this motor. The speed of that's going to make fuck all different. But it's no point in us going so slow that we're not picking up the big stone. stone. We'll still pick up the big stone. I can hear it coming clunk clunk through the machine. Yeah. A lot of How did these guys get here? That's when they pick up the speed. It can go in between the pool. But the team the feels the it's Gary's technique that's at fault hard. and not the machine. No, he's being spiteful. Dude. When you get in there, he's just <laughs> sucking. Exactly. If you, give me the you fucking wet it. You, can, you can't go bush in the water and you can't. Not, the power. You, not when there's so much fire. No, the ah, bro, it's like fighting against the wind, bro. You just smell the shit the whole time, bro. That layer of fine shit off first, then you can go a bit faster. But now that fine shit, he's just pumping that one way, and that's clogging everything up. You pump out and it's pumping too fast. Now they must go back in. Fucking machine, they must get this thing right. Bro. I'm not, not sure what's really going on in Gary's head, eh? Shame, I don't think he's all here. I don't know, so, man. I'm just busy focusing, I'm trying to, this thing's hard enough as it is, uh, I can't worry about that. <laughs> Useless cunt. Fuck sakes. You might as well fucking go back to Joburg. The wet season is supposed to be over, but the rains continue. The next morning, they wake up to flooded rivers. Is it wise to cross here? And then get in the water there and get washed all the way back to here. <laughs> <laughs> the safest thing to do is to take the road, walk around, get in the Kandakan and come fetch the rest of the crew. Yeah. Right. Take it on. Play it safe. What is too high? You can't see any rocks here and usually you see them all. Yeah, it's very, very high water. But if you're going to walk there, you might as well walk with the driver. Because everybody's going to get the same time. Yeah. And then later on, you can bring everybody back and the cars are here. Yeah. The idea is we're going to walk Chase along the side of the mountain you. there, mm. all along the edge, and then land up right, in the same the spot. The crew walk around the first river on the donkey trail. To get across the second river, they're going to need the cat. and dig it. Carry it a bit ahead here. Come. Once again, Gary is not interested in helping out. He only takes his wetsuit and leaves the rest of the team to unload the gear. I think in, 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 the, in the four days we've been here, I've seen him lift something once. The rest of the time he's been goofed, stoned, suffering from the DTs. The cat can't get out of the river. They're trying to dig their way out, but it's not going anywhere.
Day three of mining Wednesday. Although we already had one pump running yesterday, which was a good thing. Got to get all this shit done. We ain't, we ain't going back in here with any cars in the near future, that's for sure. But let's get some rocks. Hey, another day of hassles. We'll get it right. A big storm has raised water levels in the valley, and now the heavy cat is stuck in the mud. Remember a few months ago I spoke about, I used the term clusterfuck. This is one of those. <laughs> it's a monumental clusterfuck, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. We get a machine to get us out of the shit, and it gets us into the shit. The cat is blocking access to the mining site. If the team can firm up the riverbank, they might free it. We need more than one rock, but Fuck. And bulldoze it from the top. The TLB is enlisted to grade the approach out of the river. Not too deep, bro. Fuck. I just think uh, we're digging ourselves another hole here. Just now, this falls over the water. Let me fuck. Nothing is working, and the cat is just getting stuck deeper in the thick river mud. Go and get rocks. Guys, put rocks in the front of this. Back up, fill the thing with rocks, and bring it. I can't see too many cars going through there right now. Get a fucking drive before you get back across this river. <laughs> Another attempt is made to firm up the bank. This time with much bigger rocks. Drop it here. Don't come any further. Jesus. Woo! Fucked up that road. They've made it out of the river, but have wasted another entire day not mining. Next morning, everything's up and running early, but Gary's nowhere to be seen. 11.54. I'm actually worried. Gary left his gloves at, um, at the camp. So he had to go back to the camp, fetch his gloves, and we got the thing running. So we said, hey, Rob got into the water and started operating the machine and everything like that down there, being the diver in his shorts and t-shirt. <laughs> well, Gary, in his usual fashion, has uh, done a bit of a disappearing act. So I decided there's no time like the present. Jump in the water, it's not that cold. Just need a bit of determination, that's all. I'm gonna suck some diamonds now, watch. They have lost all patience with Gary, and his future at the mine is now in jeopardy. But Gary doesn't realize. The way he was carrying on, I, I didn't even think that had a chat to him. We told him, as far as we're concerned, Friday he's going with you, and you're not coming back. He says, oh, yes, I am. I said, no, you're not. It's not your decision to come back. I really feel sorry for him. He's, he's got a problem, but it's all of his own making. When he finally arrives, he's as unrepentant as ever. It's always someone else's fault. No, the gloves are in the dye box. But when I asked people this morning, where's the dye box? They said it was either in the Land Rover or in the trailer where everything else was put. Then I fucking get to nothing's here. So I asked them again, where is everything? Oh no, the, the dye bag was put in my room. Like fucking retards. The diver's supposed to know where his gear is at all times and fucking maintain it. Fuck me, did he swim across the river? Oh. Rob Thunder is angry with Gary and can barely look him in the eye. And with all the delays, everyone is becoming anxious. You got a hot 
they are not moving nearly enough earth. If they can set up the hopper soon, productivity will increase. This needs to go to the bottom, that one needs to come to the top, so these sit in line. And nobody listens. You're not talking, get involved, guys. I have, I have, I have about eight times. I just get on over. Yeah, no one's changing, bro. Help us then, get involved and do the job. Eight times already, I'm not saying it's 15. No, then get in and do it, help us. Desperate to get ahead, the team are trying to assemble the three and a half ton hopper using flimsy straps. It is highly dangerous. If the strap snaps, someone could be crushed. But the risk pays off. The hopper is starting to take shape. It starts raining, but the team can't stop. A big storm brings with it the danger of a flash flood. Pete and Warren keep a weary eye on the river. That's the check of this river coming down. And just as lunch is called, the river comes down in flood. Flash flood hits the mine, and the team scramble to save the machinery. If they don't move fast, the equipment will be swept away by the rising water. Now, that you, now imagine how fast it's moving to bring the stones from their tank. Look, the storm is still up. This is going to keep going for an hour or two. The weather conditions up here are extreme, to say the least. The rain started coming down pretty hard. And next minute, somebody shouted, look at the river, and literally a wall of water came down from the tributary, came down from Dead Sea. And you think the diamonds didn't come down? They come down like hell. Look at that rain up there. If it comes faster, we'll have a problem, but I think that's it. I've heard about flash floods before, I've just never seen them. And it was quite a, quite a sight to behold. It was a, a meter high of chocolate brown water. It all came down. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It is amazing. I put him in the water. Jow him like that. Yeah, can you, just can you shove him in your mouth. Going up that street, right? I'll swallow him like that. If you put him in there, he'll get fucked up on the rocks. We're having an adventure. An adventure wouldn't be an adventure if it wasn't a bit of few panicky situations. <laughs> there is no time to waste. The team continue assembling the hopper, with the exception of Gary. In between minds about it, but I think it'll work. Might work. Hopefully it'll work. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, at the end of the day, the proof will be in the pudding. And yeah, let it be, huh? Eh? It'll go. Yeah, it's going to be quite interesting. I'd see it all work. Pretty excited to get it going. That's why I'm trying to push through now. Once the hopper is complete, the nozzle that will carry the concentrate into it needs to be attached. Here's the nozzle. Going to need a bit of heat. Let's try, let's try. If it doesn't go straight, it won't go in. Pluck some it, come. Fuck Just keep going. Thing, it's going. Whoa. <laughs> I've got nothing left to hold. Just take it out and try. Let's just try. Uh, nothing. Forget it. Now. Yeah, it no, forget it. Let's just take it out and we'll do it 
we go back and do it at the at the lodge. Yeah, it's getting there, a bit slow. The rain buggered us around tremendously, but you know what, we're all getting there. So I am happy with the progress. I want to see this unit run. Okay, done. Let's get out of here. Peter and Rob have to pay a visit to the mines department. But before they go, they want to have a little chat with Gary. What's up with you? I was worried if you can get some spasm or something for me. And I've been shitting that non-stop since yesterday before lunch already. Wait, too much dope. You've got to watch out. It'll take you out, eh? It'll kill you if you carry it. I haven't smoked all since... I didn't smoke at all yesterday. I heard you were smoking at the at the river yesterday. No, I didn't smoke any at the river yesterday. Listen, it's unacceptable, Gary. And also, you know, if Oak's sick, he's sick. Okay, Gary, let's cut the bullshit wood. I overheard you in the car saying to your new girlfriend that uh, you had heavy DTs and you felt like the skin was crawling off your back. You forget that conversation. You've been hitting it hard. Buddy, you know what? My DTs are past. This is something else. This is a bug I've got in somehow, somewhere. Since you've been here, I've seen you do one thing. Yesterday you helped briefly taking a a machine trying to take a machine off the back. Otherwise, you've stood around watching me, but you've been totally out of it. Honest course. to God, I'm feeling shit. Mm. I was Warren, I was up every hour last night. Every two hours, I was up. On but the that's withdrawal. Shit in my gut. That's withdrawal. I don't recognize the person I've seen the last few days here compared to the person I knew I'm last year. I'm not feeling well, bro. No, I know that, but when you got in the car in Bethlehem, you were wired to the hilt. Your veins were popping out on top of your head. I wasn't feeling well. You were well sweating. But, buddy, that's what happens when you hit it hard, whatever you're taking. G or tick or whatever the stuff it is. Oh, they make these blood out. For the first three or four days, yeah, he was just warm and nowhere. Right? He just he lacked enthusiasm, he lacked energy, he was completely apathetic. Eventually, <clears throat> we confronted him about it, and he admitted that um, between when we, when we cut off last year, 15th of December to you know, the 15th of February, um, he'd been into some heavy drugs. I think his mind is just uh, fish curry, honestly. To be honest, I think he's, uh, he's just, he lost it. No, don't bullshit yourself. No point. It is what it is. You just got to sort yourself out. No, it's too late for that. And, you know? Because you actually, you haven't been present. You haven't been present. From the time you got here, you haven't been present. When I say you haven't been present, you may as well not have been here. We, is, there's no place for somebody like that here. No. Gary, Gary Bush, listen to me. Listen to me nasty. And right now, as we sit here right now, there is no place for you here. I'm telling you that now. There is no place for you because you just, you're not there. You're not letting back. Nothing's going to change. As Peter and Rob leave, Conrad arrives. He quickly sums up the feeling towards Gary. Like a plaster. Yeah. Pull it off quickly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, pretty pissed off today. Fuck. And um, I haven't been feeling well since I got off the bus. Been uh, shitting my lungs out. Last night I was cutting and shitting the whole fucking time. Now they're talking about sending me back. Actually, yeah, just to check on the guys, I'm going to come back next week sometime. I'm leaving in the next uh, hour or so. Yeah, everybody looks happy. I think there's, uh, we might change one of our staff. A diver, one diver. He is really shooting himself in the foot. Had a fantastic opportunity here. Kim has to leave the valley for a cancer treatment, and he's taking Gary with him. But he won't be bringing Gary back. Okay, so now. I don't know what, we, what you must do here. What do you mean? Blind move now on you. What? Kim, he's been instructed to take you to Joburg and not fetch you. Where was this discussed? Last night and this morning. I say you either stay 
Well, I can't just... stay, but I've already made promises to people that I've got, I'll be there tomorrow. Well, I'll, uh, go, I'll leave all my stuff here. They've got something they want to speak to me about. They can speak to me like men, face to face when I get back. I'll gladly climb on the first well, bus. I was just going to say, because oh, Kim's not fetching you, just so you know that. So I don't know what to say, dude. I keep feeling sick, bro. I was not allowed to feel sick anymore. Listening. Nothing but do my fucking work every fucking night. Cool. So what, what should I do? Must I pack everything or? There's two ways you can do it. There's one way to stay and fight it with fight it out with him. Or just Or do I pack up and then face the inevitable. That's that's because it is inevitable. I mean they Conrad it was it, they all seven and sat me down. But if they pretty much made up their mind that that's it, I'm done. Yeah, they have. I'm really? sorry to say, I am sick. So it's inside, and it's wet. I'm pretty much fucked. I was relying on these next two months uh, work and that income and that to actually set my stuff up at the coast and get my stuff going again. Bottom line is, I think this is all kind of fucked up. People don't have the balls to actually say to me face to face. Because now, after this, I've got no future, bro. Another job, bro. What can you do? There's nothing. Right. Let's go down there. Dog. Check you later, dog. Oh, wait, gents. Let's a look, Captain. Gary, he's a lost soul, and I, I hope he finds his way in the future. Just right now, he's a lost soul, he's too heavily into the drugs, and for us, that can't happen. It's too dangerous, somebody will die. So I'd rather we get him out of here. Gary's time in the mountains is over, but the team must carry on. We can't afford to lose one more hour not pumping. When that frigging hopper starts working, we'll move and we'll move probably five to six times the amount that we'll move with one pump, which is an incredible edge because it's all about volume, moving volume. While everyone concentrates on the hopper, Peter has some luck at the sorting table. I found two stones this afternoon on the sorting table. I just poured out a bag now, threw it on the ground, and it just, in fact, what? as I poured, it was on top. So I thought, ah. and uh, yeah, it's a diamond. It's a diamond. It's probably about $2,000, about 20 grand. They're not hard to see. That might be 20, that'll be 2 million. Looks like a fucking nice one. This is nice. That's actually better than the other one. No fucking way. It's from doubling down the mountain, all the shit's knocked off of it. It's in perfect condition. But you know, the thing is with stones, they are everywhere, yeah. And it's just, they're so far and few between, you've got to look really hard. What you're going to do now, I'm going to weigh them, then I'm going to put them under the microscope and try and figure out the value. There's three, there's four indicators in a diamond. Color, cut, clarity, and carat weight. Those are your four indicators. Didn't expect to get a diamond on day three. Yeah, this is a very nice stone. Every one of those is a triangle. On every face, there are little triangles. In fact, that whole thing is a triangle. Then if you look at that next face, that whole thing is a triangle. Total value, 63,000 at the discounted Rappaport, which is the lowest of trade prices, or 69,000 Rand. There we go, that's our day's fund. As I said down there, it wouldn't pay for the, 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 the grader. But nevertheless, that's pretty good for a day's work. If we can achieve this every day, suddenly we're in the money. I'm going to train Simon up. The guy's never dived a day in his life. It's sort of a challenge to me. Fucking a bit hectic. I think we're in trouble. Calamity. Absolute calamity. It's quite a nice one, that. Well done, Kim. I'm the only guy on site now. Everyone's left. We're going to be the first millionaires in Lesotho, bruh. We're just wasting time. We must start calming the fuck down. It's good that it all 
came out. You gotta break a few eggs to make scrambled eggs. And we short, we short staffed, eh? Really.